morning everyone it's january 30th 2017 i welcome you all thank you for watching i got my spaghetti sauce on the stove so i got some time to put out another video and it's about radio waves and uh, i don't want you to think that yoga bear only has that one quote he's got another quote i really like if you don't know where you are going you might wind up some place else <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people in this world that want you to go where they want you to go and they want you to think what they want you to think and uh, i try to fight that as much as i can and i found i think is another lie from nasa imagine that nasa uh, lying to us and I'm gonna try to explain that to you right here in this next few minutes let's go have a look shall we now uh, this is uh, a little blurb here from uh, NASA and it says your messages travel through space as radio waves just like the radio waves that you receive with a car radio. Each spacecraft has a transmitter and a receiver for radio waves as well as a way of interpreting the information received and acting on it. Radio waves from a spacecraft need to be received on Earth and are quite often weak or are often quite weak when they get there that I mean on earth nasa has huge radio receivers to gather information from space missions these must be precisely aimed so they can get the waves likewise nasa must precisely aim transmissions to aircraft so these ships can hear the messages okay there's a lot there folks and if we look at it closely we're gonna see that this is all a bunch of milk cow dung okay radio waves right here radio waves from a spacecraft need to be received on earth and I brought up on one of my previous ones maybe the one just before the one I just posted on radio waves coming from space to earth nasa tells us the radio waves go through the ionosphere but sometimes they bounce off of the ionosphere and they hit the ground or the ocean because it goes over the ocean too and they can bounce off the ionosphere and they bounce off of the ground or the ocean and then they bounce over and they can go over a long distances and can be received on the other end of the earth or the other side of the earth if you don't adhere to a flat earth model i didn't stutter i just went slow john wayne that's why John Wayne talks the way that he does, because he used to stutter. But nobody says anything about John Wayne talking slow, do they? So maybe I should just talk slow and carry a six-gun like John Wayne, huh? Just kidding. So, now never mind that it could be bouncing off of the firmament and not the ionosphere but we'll just forget about that for now let's just assume they're right it bounces off the ionosphere so my question was what happens if the radio waves the electromagnetic radio waves are coming from outer space what's to stop them from bouncing off the ionosphere on the way in and never getting to the ground never getting to these huge radio receivers that NASA says they have to gather information from space missions and he, they say they're all the radio waves coming back from space are quite often weak no kidding and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute because this 
video is actually on Marconi. And I caught NASA, I think, in a lie, and I'm going to let you make up your own mind. But let me, let me go on here. These huge radio receivers must be precisely aimed so they can get the waves. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about that. These spacecraft that are up there are traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. NASA says the ISS, I didn't say ISIS, the ISS is traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. That's five miles a second. But NASA is telling us that they have these huge receivers that can catch these waves that are often quite weak when they get here, and that's assuming they don't bounce off the ionosphere. So let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. We got these quite often weak waves, radio magnetic waves, coming through the ionosphere right directly to where they want to be. And don't forget, Houston may be on the other side of the spinning ball Earth, spinning spear Earth, and so it's never going to get there. So there's at least a few hours of the day that they can't communicate with each other because they're, they're, they can't get through. The, are, are NASA going to tell us now that the, the waves go through the Earth itself? I don't know. Am I missing something here? I know somebody's going to come on here and tell me that I'm missing something and I'm stupid and I, and I don't get it and all that. But, uh, you know, give it your best shot, all righty? So anyway, the waves are coming through. They're very weak, quite often very weak, using their words, coming all the way from millions of miles away. They got these huge disks in order to catch these weak waves. The spacecraft is traveling at, at ice, ISS, is traveling at 17,000 miles an hour, and but yet NASA says they got their uh, trans transceivers aimed precisely at the spacecraft, and the spacecraft has got their aircraft or their transmitter aimed precisely so that it goes right into the transceiver of NASA, even though NASA may be on the other side of the Earth because it's spinning around and, you know, if you believe all that, I don't know, but let's move on to my other point I want to make, okay? Last night I found this video, I went looking for it, it's quite old, it's like 2010, so this is before NASA figured out they better stop better stop lying as much as they do in there they, they haven't quit lying it's just that it's harder to uh it's harder now to uh to catch them okay i'm going to play the video it's pretty short it's actually on my hard drive so i can hear it too at the same time but it's going to be cool here we go nope i actually can't hear it my software won't let me hear audio, but anyway, you can hear it. Guglielmo Marconi's first radio transmissions in 1894 have spread into space for over 100 years at the speed of light. They passed Sirius in 1903, Vega in 1919, and Regulus in 1971. That signal has already passed over 1,000 stars. Anyone orbiting one of those stars with a really good receiver could detect Marconi's signal and know that we are here. Radio waves are the longest and contain the least energy of any electromagnetic wave. While visible light is measured in minute fractions of an inch, radio waves vary from about 19 centimeters, about the length of a water bottle, to waves the length of cars, ships, mountains, all the way up to monstrous waves longer than the diameter of our planet. Heinrich Hertz discovered radio waves in 1888. The first commercial radio station went on the air in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on November 2, 1920. Then, in 1932, a major discovery by Carl Jansky at Bell Labs 
revealed the stars and other objects in space radiated radio waves. Radio astronomy was born. However, however, scientists need giant antennas to detect weak, long wavelength radio waves from space. The enormous Arecibo radio dish antenna measures 305 meters in diameter, over three football fields. Scientists can link the signals from an array of separate radio antennas to focus on tiny slices of distant space. Such arrays act as a single immense collector. This giant New Mexico array uses 27 parabolic dish antennas shaped into a giant Y, with each arm capable of stretching for 13 miles. Scientists have even spread these linked antennas across the globe. One of the largest stretches from Hawaii to the Virgin Islands and acts like such a powerful telephoto lens that a baseball sitting on the moon would fill its entire field of view. Many of the greatest astronomical discoveries have been made using radio waves. Pulsars, the existence of giant clouds of superheated plasma, which are among the largest objects in the universe, and even quasars, such as this one over 10 billion light years away, were all discovered using radio waves. Radio waves also provide more local information. Astronomical objects that have a magnetic field usually produce radio waves, such as our sun. Thus, NASA's stereo satellite is able to monitor bursts of radio waves from the sun's corona. Wave sensors on the wind spacecraft record the radio waves emitted by a planet's ionosphere such as the bursts from Jupiter, whose wavelength measures about 15 meters. Radio waves fill the space around us to bring entertainment, communications, and key scientific information. We can't hear these radio waves. When you tune your radio to your favorite station, the radio receives these electromagnetic radio waves and then vibrates a speaker to create the sound waves we hear. We may not be able to tap our toes to the cosmic radio transmissions, but we certainly discovered much about our universe's grand cosmic dance by listening to them. Now, they said quite a bit in there, and I, I don't have time to go back and, and redo it right at this time, but they said a couple of things that were pretty interesting. They said that there's a lot of electromagnetic waves coming from outer space. And from the... Uh, the sun and the stars, and I believe the moon, but they didn't say the moon. They only said the sun and the stars. I th the scripture says that the sun and the stars and the moon are all lights. They want us to believe the, there's planets, and I don't believe there's planets. Scripture doesn't say anything about creating planets. So those, what they say are planets, are only wandering stars. And those wandering stars, uh, the planets that they say are planets, and the stars all emit electromagnetic waves, which we can receive. And that's why they have those big receivers all over in the one they showed you in Mexico, New Mexico. And the one that they say is uh, from wherever it was, you know, and they showed the globe. They always got to get you program your mind to thinking that there's a globe and they're, they're, uh, and the, and these stars are millions and millions of miles away and light years away and all that stuff. It's, they're not. They're close. You know, look up at the moon sometime and tell, and ask yourself, is that moon 238,000 miles away? I don't think so. And the sun is 93 million miles away? I don't think so. So, but I don't want to get off on that, but I caught that. And, I, you know, there's electromagnetic waves, and they even admit this, they're everywhere. And Nikola Tesla was trying to tell us, he did tell us, that there's energy in the space, in our air, everywhere, and it's free energy, and we can, we can uh, take that energy out of the air, and that's what they've done they've taken the energy out of the air and they've created these electromagnetic what we call ufos and and i saw them so i know they exist i saw them here at the park in august 2010 
and they were flying at incredible high speeds and they were way up there in in space and uh, anyway we, we don't need to go there but i saw them so i know they exist and they're taking the energy out of the air out of our um, atmosphere and they're using it by creating electromagnetic a device somehow in the spacecraft and i want to show you one more thing this is an edit actually because the the uh, video didn't work like i thought and it, you didn't hear it it was no sound so i had to redo it again but i want to show you one more thing before i forget so i typed in radio waves from space in a google search and be careful like i said whatever they put up here first that's all propaganda 100 percent propaganda that's what they want you to think and uh but here here we're here we're getting in we're getting propaganda about radio waves from space look at this november 18 brightest burst of radio waves from space could be extraterrestrial this one, January 4th, just a couple weeks ago. Source of mysterious deep space radio wave discovered for the first time. Okay, oh, wait a minute. Discovered only a decade ago has been traced to a precise source for the first time. Like another one, December 27, just a few months ago. Or last month, scientists say radio waves from deep space could be aliens. They're getting us prepped folks there are strange radio waves hitting earth from space and scientists look at this one that's january the 8th a couple weeks ago uh, december 23rd are aliens trying to contact earth six new blasts of radio energy okay they're getting us prepped for this alien invasion that they want us to believe is coming they're getting it all ready and as I've said before, I think this um, alien invasion is going to originate from the, or I've been corrected so many times, I like to say the Antarctic. And it's, and it's been several different ways I've seen it. Antarctica and Antarctic. And see, in my subconscious mind, the, the Antarctic is the circle of ice around our level plain earth holding in the oceans and the and antarctica is this continent that they want us to believe is on the bottom of a spinning spear with millions and, and billions of cubic feet of ocean water being held to the sides in the bottom of a spinning spear earth Okay, and I'm the crazy one. Anyway, I believe that they're going to bring this alien invasion out of the, out of Antarctica. I might be wrong, but what do you think? Video you watched said Marconi, Guglielmo, and I'm half Italian, so I, I really like when I find out about the fellow Italians that have done some uh, uh, inventions and innovations. And the Italians are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. And some people are going to say, well, you know, the Italians mix, race mix. Well, my, my mother's side maiden name, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's, it's actually from uh, Britain. So they somehow ended up down there in Italy. But that's a whole other subject. I just want to keep reminding people who, who watch these videos that it was the Caucasian race that was a blessing to all the other nations of the world. They all use radio waves. They all use the telephone. They all use a lot of the inventions and innovations that the Caucasian race, which is from the 12 tribes of Israel, and they weren't Jewish. Okay, I'm not going to go there any further than that. But let's move on with Marconi. If I remember right, the video said that Marconi's first radio transmission in 1894 has gone out 
millions and millions and millions and millions of miles, right? That's what it said. Well, let's look at this from Wikipedia. And I want to warn you, when you go to do a search, they're going to throw Wikipedia up f first. The first thing they throw up at you, be suspect. Because they don't want you to go to the other ones. They want you to go to what they want you to go because they control this. This is edited by people that are controlling the information that we get. But then, and that's why I use it for things like this. If I really want to find out what's going on, I don't go to Wikipedia only. I may go there as part of my search and, and my investigation, but I don't go there only. Some people will go to Wikipedia. Ah, this is what Wikipedia says, and it disagrees with what you say, so you're wrong because Wikipedia is a, quote, reliable source, which is male cow dung. So let's scroll down here to where, and I did this last night already, and we talk about the radio works, and if I believe it was 1894, right? So I don't see anywhere in here where he actually did any radio transmission in 1894 per se, but... Okay, I had to come back. My uh, spaghetti sauce on the stove was coming over the top, and then I got a phone call, But so I'm a little uh, combooberated here. But uh, 1894, here we are right here. The only thing that I see that he did is he made an, uh, an alarm ring across the room in his shop. But let's just say they got the wrong year, okay? Let's say it was 1895 instead of 1894. So right down here, in the summer of 1895, Marconi moved his experimentation outdoors and continued to experiment on his father's estate in Bologna. He tried different arrangements and shapes of antenna, but even with improvements, he was only able to transmit signals up to one half mile, a distance Oliver Lodge had predicted in 1894 as the maximum transmission distance for radio waves. A breakthrough came that summer, summer of 1895, when Marconi found that a might, much greater range could be achieved after he raised the height of his antenna and borrowing from a technique used in wired telegraphy, grounding his transmission and receiver. With these improvements, the system was capable of transmitting signals up to two miles and over hills. The monopole antenna reduced the frequency of the waves compared to the, to the two-pole antennas used by Hertz and radiated vertically polarized radio waves which could travel longer. By this point, he concluded that a device could became, become capable of spanning greater distances. I almost missed this, and I thought this was pretty funny, and I think you will too. Um, Marconi couldn't get funding for, so he wrote here, it says, Marconi wrote to the Ministry of Posts and Telegraphs, then under the direction of the Honorable Pietro Lakava explaining his wireless telegraph machine and asking for funding. He never received a response to his letter, which was eventually dismissed by the minister who wrote, quote, to the Langara on the document, referring to the Asain Asylum on Via della Lungara in Rome. So, don't we have the same thing going on today? We have people that are, are questioning the status quo, the, the uh, conventional thinking, and we are not taking what they've said, and we've got other ideas, but we're the ones who are crazy. This has been going on for, for hundreds and hundreds of years, so don't feel bad. I certainly don't when someone tells me that I'm crazy. This is an image of uh, Marconi's receiver. 
Remember now, this is 1894, 1895, 1896. And this is the transceiver. Marconi's transceiver, I believe the date is 1895. So one to receive and one to send. This is the one to send. And all these other stars that they say are millions and billions and light years away. The universe is expanding and then they show people pictures and and NASA wouldn't lie to us, uh, would they? They're all telling the truth. They got uh, uh, that guy Hawkins, and they got Neil deGrasse Tyson, and they got the astronauts, and they got everything, and they're all wearing a tie. Yeah, my buddy told me, you know, Charles, you should wear, he just called me. He says, Charles, you should wear a tie, and maybe people will believe you more, and, you know, maybe uh, um put a suit coat on or something you know maybe i wear a bow tie who's that guy neil pie or whatever his name is. maybe i'll start wearing a bow tie you know because that'll make it more credible but but me i'm just a guy here in his uh in his home and uh and i stutter and stammer and how you know what the heck do i know right so anyway i think we caught him in another lie you know it's just one lie after the other and uh, I'm learning more about radio waves all the time, and uh, the antennas are important. I know that. I haven't got into the antenna too much, but uh, I'll look into that too, and, uh, and uh, I want to learn a little more. And as I learn, I'll share with you. And I may switch my topic. I may get tired of this for a little while and take a break, and uh, I'll move on to something else. And uh, if you want to watch that, that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. And I want to thank you for subscribing. I hope you're beginning to see more and more every day the importance of embracing a love for the truth because that's how we stop from being duped and deceived. See, I have a problem with D, 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 top of my tongue. I'm going to bring that up. And uh, I'll be training my subconscious mind from uh, more often now so that uh, I can overcome my... my uh, quote speech problem so that more of you can uh, watch me without get i had one guy complain because he had to look up at the ceiling <laughs> never mind all the time it takes to make these videos and uh could be doing other things you know i do i do a lot of things and i enjoy doing this so i don't have a problem with that but uh can you believe that complaining that he had to look up at the ceiling <laughs> Anyway, may the grace of God, the creator of the heaven and the earth covered by a firmament and the electromagnetic waves and the ionosphere, and I believe it's probably there, the atmosphere is there. And uh, there's a lot. Thank you, Chief, for bringing up the uh, the vacuum and the second law of third thermodynamics. I'm going to look into that again. I kind of forgot about that. There's those three laws. And Newton didn't know anything about those three laws because they weren't articulated till later after Newton. So the th whole theory of uh, gravity, which is a myth, is debunked just with uh, a couple of those uh, first, second, third law of thermodynamics. And all you shills, yes, all you internet shills, bring it on. Thanks for watching. See ya. It's crucial to remember that people pay more attention to your demeanor than they do your evidence. That's right. It's crucial to remember that people pay more attention to your demeanor than they do your evidence. That's right.